Welcome to Christian Life Center. It is so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Are you glad to be in his house today? We are thrilled that you are here to worship the name of Jesus, to lift him up today. We welcome all of our guests who have joined us today at CLC. Can we let our guests know how thankful we are that they're here today? If you're a first time guest, we would love to meet you after service in our connection room in the foyer to the right. You'll find us there and we have a gift for you just to express our appreciation to you for coming to worship with us today. We're thrilled to have some very good friends of ours, the Brickle family who are in town visiting with us today from St. Louis, surprised us. We attended church with them for eight years there in St. Louis and uh, he serves on the staff at Urshan Graduate School of Theology and we're just thrilled to have them in service today and to each of you who have come to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm thankful that he is here in this service today. I'm thankful that his presence is here. This is Pentecost Sunday. Now we have Pentecost Sunday every Sunday here at CLC, but this day in particular is Pentecost Sunday. Churches around the world, even non-Pentecostal churches, are talking, talking about Pentecost today and celebrating Pentecost. If, if ever there's a church that ought to celebrate this day, it's an apostolic Pentecostal church. We're apostolic in our identity. We're Pentecostal in our experience because we believe that God still pours out His Spirit just like He did on the day of Pentecost. We still receive the Holy Ghost. We believe in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is still working and moving and ministering. I wonder if we could take a moment at the beginning of this service and just invite the Spirit of God into this place to move, to minister as He desires. Come on, lift up your voice in a great shout of praise.
Yeah. 
may be fighting for our minds. We may be fighting for our joy, for our peace. But God's in control. Oh, yes, he's in control. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. There's a war going on. service but you can you can just it's it's tangible you can feel it you can just feel it in this place when the saints of God when we begin to pray and we begin to worship there's just something that happens and I it's, it's metaphysical and no one in the physical realm they can't understand it it just every everything that's weighing down on you every oppression every depression every sickness every affliction everything that just weighs on you and just keeps you down and just the enemy wants to keep you under it but but when you begin to lift your hands and you begin to praise God you begin to reach out in prayer it just it just pierces through all those layers of all that weight and reaches the throne of God and I'm thankful to know that I'm not praying to a dead God. I'm not praying to a weak God, an impotent God. He's not a God with a shortened hand or lacking power. I'm, I'm praying to the God who, who by his will upholds all that is. And so when I pray and I go to prayer, and we're going to in a moment, we're praying to a God that I want you to know is able. That no matter what need you've brought, he's able. No matter what your circumstance, he's able. We want to lift up our prayer request today on the list today. We want to remember to pray for Sister Debbie Clark. And, and if I got the right intel, Sister Debbie is with us today. And is she sitting back there looking for a hand? or a... Yeah, there she's back there. Awesome. That is such... God has been with her in every step of the way. It's been a long road, but Sister Deb, we've been praying, and God has just been there every step of the way. He's been there with you. So when we pray for her in a moment, just, Brother Donnie, reach over and lay your hand on her, and we're going to just pray and believe that God's just going to keep right on doing what he's doing and bringing her through this. I believe in a miracle-working God, church. I still believe that no matter how bad the sickness or affliction it is in our mind, to God it's nothing to just say, I can take care of that. God is still a healer. And then we also want to pray this morning for our kids. Kids camp is this coming week. As a matter of fact, how many kids? Hey, hey, that's fine. If you're excited, give them. 
That's fine. Who all is going to kids camp this week? Can I see your hands? You're not a kid, but all right. That's awesome. As a matter of fact, when we, when we pray, we're going to pray for the kids also to have a great week at camp. As a matter of fact, that some of our adults could kind of gather in here, and when we pray, just kind of pray over our kids. We, we, we believe that God can do amazing things at kids camp. Or, amen? I believe that even at a young age, God can get a hold of a heart, and he can plant something that will be with them the rest of their life. Something that will just that will change them from this week going forward. So we're going to pray for these needs and the other needs that we have. Can I see an uplifted hand? Rest assured, God knew your situation before you walked into this house today. He knew what you needed. So we're going to pray. As I said, let's extend a hand to these kids and pray for Sister Debbie and believe that God's going to work today. God, we give you glory today. We worship you that we know that, God, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Your word is truth. There is nothing too hard for you. And so, God, we pray right now for you to move in these needs according to your perfect will. I'm asking you, Lord, to work in our every unspoken request shown by uplifted hand. You knew the situation and the circumstance before we even walked in the door. And I'm praying that in Jesus' name you would work in these needs. I pray for Sister Debbie Clark this morning. I ask you, God, just to continue the work of healing, continue the work of this miraculous restoration that you are going to work out. I pray that you touch her body in Jesus' name right now. God, I pray for our kids that are going to kids' camp this week. I pray that your hand would rest on them, that, God, you would move on them, that the Holy Ghost would inspire them, provoke them, convict them, challenge them, that you would plant callings in them, that, God, those that have not yet received the gift of the Holy Ghost would receive it this coming week. In Jesus' name we are praying. By faith we believe that you're going to answer our every prayer according to your perfect will. We ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm excited for this coming week. I'm also excited for coming up this summer. And you may all, you can all begin to make your ways to your seat. I'm going to have Brother John Wilson come forward right now. And he's got an exciting announcement. How many are excited for VBS? Amen. VBS is coming. It's going to be a great time, Brother John. Thank you also, Brother John. 43 days from now, 43 days from now, we will be transforming the sanctuary into a garage. And then we're going to take those following five days and we're going to reach our community through the children of this community. Do you guys believe that? I believe that, absolutely. So, July 22nd to the 26th, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. every single evening. Last year, we launched a new VBS through Pentecostal Publishing House. It is the first ever national Pentecostal curriculum for a VBS that's ever been done. This is our second year of doing it. We're extremely excited about it. Last year, we had a child receive the Holy Ghost during VBS. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need some volunteers. So we will not be launching the registration for the children until sometime in the very beginning of July. But right now we are in need. Last year we had approximately 30 volunteers and, and we are very intentional about where we place people. Very efficient and it was amazing. But we're going to have more children here this year than we did last year. I believe it. Last year we did not promote it very much within the community. It was something new we were wanting to try and start. This year, we are making a very heavy push, very much the same way we do for extravaganza and trunk or treat. We're going to reach this community through our children. As I said, this year, we are partnering with Sister Harker and Brother Brian, and we are reaching out specifically to the deaf community. And I have a vision, and I know what's going to happen. We're going to have 25 to 30 deaf children here at this VBS. I want you guys to claim that with me, believe it with me, that is 25 to 30 families that are going to be impacted, and then their family, are going to, they're going to hear about it, they're going to tell about it. We're going to reach this community. We're going to reach this community. So what I need your help with, we have crafts, games, lessons, all kinds of things going on. Go to clcheath.com slash registration or use the app, and there is a place on there to register to be a volunteer for VBS. Now, we are very organized with this, so you have two weeks to sign up. 
If you do not sign up within the next two weeks and you come to me later and say, I really want to help, I will try to squeeze you in, but I cannot make any promises. So it's important. Please sign up, register for VBS to help. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And I just have to throw this out there. Camp is this week, and they made a terrible mistake because they have Pat and myself as dorm dads, right? That is crazy. So you know something special. I don't know if it's good, but something special is going to happen this week at Children's Camp. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand together. They may never be allowed back on the campgrounds after this week. Remains to be seen. They're going to have a great time as they do every year. So thankful for all the volunteers, not only from here, but all over the district that help during the weeks of camp. It's going to be a great summer. Look forward to great things going on. Our ushers are getting ready right now. They're going to make their way. We're going to give you an opportunity to give and support the kingdom of God through your giving. And as they're coming, one thing we do want to remind you of is to stop at our information center, pick up our weekly connect. It will outline all of the various events and things that are going on. But one very special announcement after service today over in our Family Life Center, the youth are hosting a fundraiser luncheon. So if you have uh, if you have the time and the opportunity to stop by and help them out, just a free will offering donation and a great time of fellowship and great food being prepared, uh, you'll have a great time. So we want to encourage everybody to stick around, be part of that. Uh, you'll bless them and it will bless you. So we're looking forward to that after service today. But now we have an opportunity to give to God. You can give uh, by giving in the offering, going online, using the church app, so many different ways. But what is, what is important above all things is that we consistently and faithfully support God's kingdom. I, God has never failed me yet. God's never let me down. Uh, whenever I've had a need, God has been the supplier of those things. And we're going to make sure that we uh, give to his kingdom and let God bless. So church, it's time to get ready and give an offering back to the kingdom of God. And we give that with great joy today. We're going to pray together. We're going to ask the Lord to bless what we're giving to his kingdom and bless you alike. Would you pray? Lord, we thank you this morning that we can come together and worship you. Lord, in this time of worship, we know that giving is a form of worship, and we're going to do that together as a church. We're going to give it with a joyful heart, knowing you're going to bless what's given in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. blessings on that other side of that wall. So let's just worship as we sing about waiting on the Lord. There's not a mountain too tall. There's not a problem so small that Jesus can't resolve. In time he'll get in God, He cares about us. Wait on the Lord. Ooh, we're gonna wait on you, Jesus. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And He'll renew your strength. 
is not a night to dark. A journey too long to embark. Jesus will see you through. In time, He'll make you new. Our God, He cares.
healed my body, until he heals my anxiety, until he heals my depression, God. I'm going to wait on him, because I can't turn back now. I'm already so far. I'd rather be a million steps faith to the cross than one step behind turning away. with your praise right now I'm gonna wait on you Jesus I'm not turning back you brought me too far you brought me too far you've been too good to me somebody needs this word right now come on he's gonna renew your strength right now He's going to renew your strength right now. If you'll just wait on Him with worship. Wait on Him with worship. today. magnify your holy name we exalt you Jesus hallelujah we glorify you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh there's an atmosphere of faith right now he's encouraging somebody right now he's giving strength to someone right now hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord just spoke a word to somebody to hold on. He knows where you are. If you're in a valley, it's because he has purpose there. If you're going through a trial, it's because he has purpose there. He's ordering your steps. those that wait upon him shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint 
the songwriter said teach me lord teach me lord to wait i'm not in a hurry i don't want to get i don't want to get ahead of him i want to stay right with him he's leading me he's guiding me he's ordering my steps hallelujah hallelujah one more time i want i want you to just to express whatever you're feeling in your heart right now whatever the emotion is whatever the need is wherever you are right now whatever it is that you need to express to him just give it to god right now Jesus we're waiting on you Jesus oh I'm not turning back I'm not turning back I'm gonna wait on you Jesus hallelujah 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 I feel supernatural strength flowing into this sanctuary right now hallelujah 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 he wants to strengthen your faith today he wants to encourage you right now hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 thank you Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Here's what I feel in the Holy Ghost today. I want you to just keep doing whatever you're doing. I want you to, to, to keep doing what you feel like you need to do, but I'm, I'm just going to kind of preach through the move of God that's happening right now, if that's okay. We're just going to kind of preach through what's happening in the Spirit, and I want you to just stay sensitive to the Spirit today. I believe God has set the atmosphere and the moment for what He desires to do. This is probably going to be one of the more homiletically challenged messages I've ever preached, but I believe that the Holy Ghost wants to give a word to somebody today. I always send my notes to the media team. I'm not going to throw anybody particular under the bus today, but they replied back to me and said, Pastor, it looks like you're missing some pages of notes. God's got a word for somebody today. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13. You're not going to bother me, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to preach very long today. I just want you to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Philippians chapter 4, the apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church in Philippi, most likely from a prison cell. And even in that environment, he is expounding on the joys of the Christian life. In spite of his current circumstances, he's talking about the power and the glory of living a life committed to Jesus Christ. And nearing the end of his letter, he references this state of contentment, this place of peace. No matter what state I'm in, he said, I have found the ability to be content and to be at peace. And then he pins these oft-quoted inspirational words. In verse number 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to preach that today until somebody gets the revelation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I believe he's ordering my steps. I might be in a prison cell, but I've discovered a place of peace in the middle of my prison and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it. I can make it. I'm going through. I'm not going to give up. 
up. I'm not going to give in. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can make it through every trial. I can make it through every valley. I can do it. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to praise through my circumstance. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to make a declaration with your praise right now. I can do it. I can make it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Somebody just needs to repeat that over and over in your spirit right now. I can. I can. I can. I can. The devil says I can't, but I can. <laughs> My circumstances say I can't, but I can. <laughs> Maybe your family's saying you can't, but you can. Maybe your boss said you can, but you're saying I can. I can. Your sickness might say you can't, but your spirit is saying I can. Your flesh is weak saying I can't, but your spirit is willing saying I can. I can. I can do it. I can make it. I'm going through. I can. I can. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. The very first temptation from Satan was a temptation to do something that Adam and Eve, God had already instructed them they can't do. There were all these things they could do, but the temptation was to do the one thing they couldn't do. The enemy tries to tempt us to do what we can't do and tries to discourage us from attempting what we can do. I've come to tell somebody today, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do it. You can make it. Paul was expressing an understanding of potential. He was trying to give them a revelation of possibility. In spite of what I'm going through, I can. I know things are tough, but I can. I know I'm in a prison, but I can. I know my present state is a diagnosis that says I can't, but I've got an I can in my spirit. I know I'm going through a trial that says I can't, but I've got an I can in my spirit. I've suffered loss that says I can't but there is an I can in my spirit. I'm battling depression that says I can't but in the Holy Ghost today I can. I'm dealing with spiritual oppression that says I can't but my spirit says I can. Maybe you lost your job but your spirit says I can. Maybe you're fighting in your family but your spirit says I can Somebody say I can. Say I can. Say I can. Paul was not denying reality. He just finished saying, in whatever state I am, I've discovered the ability to be content. It was not a denial of his present reality. It was an acknowledgement of the goodness of God. It was an acknowledgement of the power of God. It was an acknowledgement of God's ability to bring him through anything that he would face. He is an ever present help in the time of trouble. If he doesn't eliminate my trouble, he can bring me through my trouble because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul does not define all things, but I think according to the Greek, the word all means all. 
And wherever you are, and whatever you're facing, and whatever you're dealing with, whatever you need to do, it is included in Paul's all. When he said, I can do all things, everything I need to do, everything God, God is calling me to do, everything God wants me to do, the potential, the possibility that God has placed within me, I can do all things through Christ. He said, it's not me, it's about him. It's not my ability, it is his ability. His confidence was not in the flesh, but his confidence was in Christ. I can do all things, not in my own ability, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but it's Christ who lives within me. He said, I'm not doing this in my own ability. I'm doing it through Christ who strengthens me. Brother Michael taught, preached on Wednesday night, his grace is sufficient. His grace makes up the difference. His grace, it goes all the way to where I am. And it pulls me to where I need to be because his strength is made perfect in my weakness it's not my strength it's his strength it's not my ability it's his ability somebody say greater is he greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world that's why I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength you can live for God. You can be victorious. You can overcome that temptation. You can overcome that sin. You can be delivered from that addiction. You can have revival in your family. You can have that breakthrough. You can be healed. You can be saved. You can be delivered. You can fulfill your purpose. You can make a difference. You can. I want somebody to say I can. I wish somebody believed it. I wish somebody believed it so strongly that you would just go ahead and do it. I can. I am an overcomer. I can. I can make my way through. I can. I can make a difference. I can fulfill my purpose. I can overcome that depression. I can overcome that oppression. I can. I can. I can. Now, we're about to go into the altar call, all right? We're there. I can is a powerful revelation. I can is incredible understanding. It's an understanding of potential. And I hope you, you have that understanding. I hope that you have that revelation today that you can make it no matter what is coming against you. That you can, you can be victorious. Not just survive, but you can thrive. You can be an overcomer. You can be delivered today. You can be set free from your sins. You can be healed today. I hope you have an understanding of that of that potential but this is when i can becomes powerful when your i can becomes an i will when your i can becomes an I will, Brother Harker, because I can say all day, I can be healed, and I can be delivered, and I can have a breakthrough, and I can have victory, and I can be healed. I can do it. I can fulfill purpose. That's a great understanding of, of, of potential, and you have to get there. You have to have faith that God can, and that you can through Christ, but there's a powerful transformation that happens when your I can becomes an I will. Woo! The psalmist said, he didn't say, I can bless the Lord at all times. 
times uh, he wasn't just talking about potential, but he was talking about action. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times, uh, and his praise uh, shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, I wish somebody's I can uh, would go ahead and transform uh, to an I will right now. The altar is open. I invite somebody to go ahead and transition uh, your I can, uh, your potential to an I will. I will be healed. I will be delivered. I will be set free. I will have a breakthrough. I will be transformed. I will be victorious. I will. I will. Through Christ. I will. If you need an I will miracle today, I want you to go ahead and just step out from where you are. If you need that kind of answer, if you need God to show up right now where you are, I want you to just go ahead and step out. Just go ahead and press on down here. Come on. Come on. There is faith in this house. God it's going to transition here's the problem a lot of times we'll say that god can but i'm not sure if he can do it for me or in me i know that god can maybe he'll do it for somebody else god is going to take your i can and turn it into an i will i believe that there is going to be demonstration of his power today it's going to happen in the next few moments I've got a great uncle and aunt live in Texas. Walked away from God over 40 years ago. A few weeks ago, my great aunt Sarah had a heart attack. God gave her a few days, space of time, for her to be able to make things right with God before she passed. Fast forward a few weeks. This past Friday, Texas district camp meeting. My great uncle was there, been over 40 years away from God. My grandma sent me a video of him there. He was still in the pew, but he was surrounded by people who were praying for him as my uncle Dole with hands raised, God refilling him with his spirit, the power of God flowing through him. For 40 years, there was an I can potential that on Friday afternoon turned into an I will. I'm sick and tired of just saying I can and not experiencing it. I'm sick and tired of just looking at possibility, but it never being realized. On Friday afternoon, he said, my I can is going to be I will. I'm breaking through today. I will break through. I will have victory. I will have revival in my home. I will be used of God. I will be restored. I will be renewed. I will be filled. I will. I will. I want you to lift your hands toward heaven right now. God knows where you are. He knows your present state. He knows your present circumstances. It may be a prison. It may be a valley. It may be a trial. It may be a physical need. It may be a spiritual need. It may be an emotional need. But God knows. And he is an ever-present help in the middle of your trouble. I want you to raise your hands toward heaven right now and let out a shout of praise by the authority of the Lord word of God by the power of the name of Jesus I will I will I will I will come on any day he will supply all my needs your breakthrough is I will always look to me Jehovah Jireh he is he is my God oh my God is more than enough my God is more than
Jehovah Jireh
There's another level of faith. After I can, that's potential. I will, that's a declarative statement of fact. It's going to happen. But the next level is I am. I am. Not I can. Not I will, but I am. Not, not I can be healed or I will be healed, but I, I, I am healed. Not, not I can be delivered or I will be delivered, but I am delivered. Not, not I can be victorious and I will be victorious. It, it's certain, but it's still somewhere in the future. No, I am victorious. The great I am is here to tell you that victory is to be a state of being for you. That you are healed and you are delivered. He that the Son has set free is free indeed. You are healed. You are set free. You are delivered. You are made whole. You are washed clean. You are somebody go ahead and say I am. I am a worshiper. I I am a I am victorious. I am said I will bless the Lord I wish you'd just go ahead and do it say I am blessing the Lord I am praising his name I am lifting him up Just go ahead and obey the Holy Ghost right now. Just go ahead and do what you feel the Holy Ghost is telling you to do. Go ahead and pray for that person. Go ahead and worship like you want to.
atmosphere. You can just feel the love of God so rich, so real, so tangible in this place today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you to make practical application of what I've preached to you today. Make practical application of what God has communicated in your spirit. Maybe you need to make three categories on a tablet or something. Here's the I can column. The I will column. And the I am column. Maybe there's some areas where you see potential. Say, I, I can do these things. Maybe in the I will column, you, you've got faith enough, maybe not for everything yet, but I, I, I will do this, or I will stop doing that. I, I will. I, I'm ready right now to make this declaration. I will. And then start filling in the I am column. I am going to do that. I am stopping doing those things that are hindering God's purpose in my life. I can, I will, I am. Anybody going to make that commitment with me that we're going to live this out? This is more than just a moment today. This is more than just a message. This was a move of God that needs to continue when we walk out of this building that we live out the commitments we've made here today. We're just going through nothing more than a religious exercise if prayers that we pray here don't affect decisions and actions out there. The prayers of commitment, the transformation that's happened around this altar and throughout this sanctuary today, we have to live that change out there. We have to live that commitment out there. It's got to impact Monday morning. It's got to impact our decisions that we make this week. Am I living according to God's purpose? Am I living according to God's plan? I'm making the declaration, I am, I am, I am in Jesus' name. One more time, I want us to just thank him for what he's done.